Hi and welcome back to Certificates in Niagara. I'm Matt Whitmer from Brody Precision and in this video we're going to be talking about client certificates. Unlike a server certificate which is used to uh, identify a server to a client so that the client knows to trust that the server is who they say they are, a client certificate works in sort of the opposite way. So instead of using a username and password to log into a server or a Niagara instance in our case, um, we would just use a client certificate that we've installed in our browser in order for us to authenticate ourselves to that server. Um, this is really common in the IT world with things like SSH keys. Um, when you go to log into a server through a terminal, um, but in our world, it's much less used. Um, this is really common and useful in Niagara um, if you want to do something like a kiosk mode so that you don't have to require a user to know a username and password in order to get into a site and uh, maybe look at values and statistics. Um, in Niagara, when you're using client certificates to log in, the login process becomes as simple as just pressing a button on the login screen. So the, the client certificates in Niagara procedure is a little bit in depth. Um, it requires you to generate a certificate on your client side. You'll export um, certificates from Niagara. You'll convert those private certificates uh, for Chrome because Chrome requires a specific file type for the certificates. Then you'll install that certificate into Chrome or whatever browser you're using, specific trust store. Then we will set up Niagara to use client's uh, certificate authentication. And then we'll set up our specific user to look at a specific public certificate that matches up with our, our private key that's going to live on the client itself. And then we'll log in uh, using all of that process that we'll set up. So we'll go to the first step, which is we're going to generate a client certificate. And we're going to do this through Workbench as we've done before because the tooling is all there for us. So let's hop into Workbench. All right, so we're in Niagara now, and we are going to open up the certificate manager within our Workbench. So we're just going to go up to Tools and Certificate Management. And we are going to create a new certificate. And we're going to change the certificate usage now from server to client. And we're going to fill it out as we have filled out these uh, certificates before. So I'm just going to put in a client for my alias. And common name, you, you typically are going to want to put in the name of the user. So I'm just going to put something like Matt W. And then organization, pretty precision and US and not after we're gonna make this expire uh, much later something like this and then we'll put in the email address as we have in the past as well and we'll let that generate and now we've got this client certificate for Matt W not gonna expire uh, for another five years all right, now we're going to export our certificate that we just created in Niagara out of Niagara. And we're going to export it two different ways. We're going to export it with the private key in it. And one version is just going to be the public certificate for it. So let's jump back into Niagara now and do that. All right, so now we're going to take that client certificate that we generated earlier and we're going to export it. First export is going to be with the private key. And we're going to throw in a password here so that we can encrypt this private key hit OK and we're going to make a slight change to the name here so instead of just keeping that alias that we gave it dot pem we're gonna add a bit in here so that we know that this one is the one that has the key in it so instead of just being dot pem we're gonna do dot key dot pem and that's just for our reference so that when we're going through the files we know which one is which we'll hit save and then we'll select that certificate again, do an export one more time, this time just with the public certificate, hit OK, and we're going to do the same thing here, make a slight change to the file name and do cert.pem and then hit save. So we're good there, so now I can come over to my file system 
and that cert management folder where these are saved and we can see we've got two different files now and if I open them both up in my text editor here we can see our version with the key has this encrypted private key at the beginning and then it has the certificate and then the certificate one just has the certificate so now we're ready to go to the next step alright so we've exported our certificates from Niagara and now we have to get them ready to be put into Chrome the issue is that Chrome doesn't really like a PEM file to have a key in it. So we have to make a file conversion happen here. And in order to do that, we're going to open up the command prompt and we're going to run this OpenSSL command. OpenSSL is a tool that uh, is open source and it's sort of the de facto tool that everyone uses when it comes to doing things with certificates. It's got stuff in there to convert certificates from one type to another. It's got stuff in there to generate certificates. But in our case, we're just going to convert from a PEM file here to a PFX. And this is what the command that we're going to run is going to look like. The only difference for you would be changing this client one in the file name to match whatever the file name that you're going to use is. And an important thing to note is we're using the version with the private key in it. So now let's jump over to the command line and give it a shot. All right, so we're going to do that certificate conversion now. And in order to do that, we've got to open up a command prompt. So I'm just going to open up my start menu here, type in CMD, command prompt will pop up. I'm going to hit enter. And now I've got a command prompt. First thing that I'm going to do is navigate to the folder where my file is. And I'm just going to copy this here. Go CD and then paste. And now I'm in that folder from my command prompt. So now I can run my command. So I need to do open SSL pkcs12 and we're doing an export the import for this command is going to be our client dot key dot p p e m and our output we're going to create a file called client dot key dot pfx hit enter it's going to ask you for the passphrase that we set up on the uh, PEM file when we exported it out of Niagara so I'm going to enter that now and then it's going to ask for a password that you want to put on the export file so I'm just going to put in the same password again it's going to ask you to verify put it in one more time and we're set now we can see that PFX file is over here now in our cert management folder alright so we've generated our certificate, we've exported our certificate, we've converted our certificate, and now we finally can install it into Chrome. So we'll open up Chrome, we'll go to the settings, we'll go to the certificates and security settings, we'll manage our certificates, we'll import that PFX file, and then we'll be set from the Chrome side. So let's take a look. Alright, so we've got Chrome opened up now, we're ready to install our private certificate into Chrome. Now it's important to note that you're going to do this process on whatever that client computer is that you want to use to log into Niagara with. It could be that kiosk computer, it could be a specific user where you don't have to have them worry about a username and password. Um, it has to be done on that specific client computer. So in my case I'm just doing it on my local machine uh, and we're going to go up here to the top right hand corner and we're going to select settings. And once you get here, we're going to go to the search, and we're going to search for certificates. And it's going to show you that that is underneath security, so we're going to click security. And then we're going to scroll down here to the bottom, and there you'll see this manage certificates option. We'll click on that, and it'll pop up a new window. And from here, we're going to do an import. And we're going to do next. And then we're going to do a browse. And we're going to browse to that location where we've got our files at. Oops. And Niagara 4.8 webs 
certificate management. And once you get there, it's important to note that you've got to drop this down and choose the second option, personal information exchange, in order to see our PFX file. Once we see it, we'll select it, we'll hit open, we'll hit next. It's going to ask us for our password. And we can leave all the other settings as the defaults. Hit next. Uh, we can leave this as default as well for where it's going to actually store the certificate. Hit next. And then hit finish. You should see that it shows up as successful. And then you should see it pop up here at the bottom of the list. And we can see that it's intended purposes for client authentication. So that's it for installing it into Chrome. Next step, we're going to get our station ready and we're going to log in. So all of our client side work is done now, and now we have to get our station set up so that we can use client certificate authentication. And in order to do that, we're going to go into uh, the client cert auth palette. We're going to pull out the authentication scheme for client cert. We'll drag it into the authentication service. We'll tweak a single setting in there that just basically tells us what the button on the login page is going to say in order to use client certificates. Um, and we'll go into that now. All right, so I'm logged into the station I want to use client certificate authentication with now. And the first thing that we're going to do is open up our palettes and we're going to look for this client cert auth palette. And we're going to select it and open it up you will see one thing in there, and that is our client cert auth scheme. And we're going to install that into our th authentication service. So we'll open up our config and services, and then we will open up authentication service, and then open up authentication schemes. We will select the client cert auth scheme and drag it up there into our authentication schemes. Click OK because that default name is good. And then we'll double click on that. And the only option that we have in there to set up is what our, log, our login button is going to say. So the way that this authentication scheme works is you get an additional button on the login screen if uh, you want to use the client certificate to authorize you into the station. So this default name for the button isn't very helpful. It doesn't tell us that we're using client certificates. So I'm going to change this and just say client cert and then hit save. And that's it for the setup on the station itself. All right, so we've got our station set up. So now it knows what client certificate authentication is, but we haven't defined what specific certificates each user is should be using or what the server should look for when they come to log in. So now that's the next step. We're going to set up our user um, and we're going to go to the, the user service. We'll set them up to use that client cert auth scheme that we just added in. And then we'll pick our public certificate that we exported early on here. And then we'll save the user and that's it for our setup. We'll be able to log in. So let's jump back into Workbench and set that up. Okay, now to set up my user, I'm going to go into services and do, 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 user service and I'm going to open this up and I'm going to use this client certificate on this client user that I have here. So I'm going to open him up and in order to use the client certificate authentication scheme, we've got to change this to client cert auth scheme. Now you'll You'll make that change and you'll think, well, what's going on? It's still asking me for a password. Don't worry about it. Hit OK. It'll say that the authenticator for that user has changed and, and may need to be updated, which it does. So we'll pop back into it now and we'll see that the authenticator portion of the user has changed. We can now select a certificate. So now I'm going to open up the file picker. Um, I'm going to go to my user home, cert management, and find that public key or the certificate itself, which is this guy here. Hit open and hit OK. And now our user set up and ready to go. Setup is now complete, and now we can finally log into our station using our client certificate. So I'm going to pull up our local host here in the browser. 
It helps if I tell it to use HTTPS. And you're not going to run into this issue because you followed all the other videos in this class. And you'll see that it's going to come up and ask me, hey, what certificate do you want to use to authenticate yourself with this local host? And we're going to select the certificate. Click OK. Then we're going to say, log in with client cert. And that's it. That's all you need to do to log in with a client certificate. And we can do that one more time. I'm going to log out. And after that first time that you come to the, the page for your station, it's not going to ask you about which certificate you want to use again. All you're going to need to do is click on that log in with local cert button and you're into the station. So that does it for this edition of Certificates in Niagara. Uh, we will see you again next week for our last video. Thanks.